What's good, peeps? Thanks as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. September 28th, Errol Spence versus Sean Poulter. Unification fight. IBF, WBC belts on the line. Um, I can't wait for this fight. I absolutely can't wait for it. Um, that's not always been the case. When the fight was first announced or even spoken about five, six months ago, I was like, yeah. But now I am fully invested. That is down to Sean Poulter. I already know what Errol Spence is going to bring to the table. Errol Spence, I think we all know how good he is. But in my head, I was thinking, are we going to see Ugas Sean Poulter? Or are we going to see the dog Sean Poulter? Right? That guy that just comes like a fucking wrecking machine. And I think it's fair to say we are going to see the wrecking machine Sean Poulter. And that excites me. Right, we're not going to see the Sean Poulter, and this is no discredit to Ugas, by the way. Ugas it is Ugas, right? Um, I don't want to see a Sean Poulter that tries to have a boxing match. Uh, no, he, he can box. I mean, you go look at his amateur record; he can box. He's got wins over the likes of Usyk and Andrade. This guy can box. I don't want to see that guy. I want to see the wrecking machine Sean Poulter, and we are going to see the wrecking machine Sean Poulter, and because of that. I tell you all, whether or not you're an Errol Spence fan or not, do not sleep on this Sean Poulter, right? I've seen some people, I think, almost blasphemous just say things like, oh, Errol Spence is going to run through Sean Poulter. Errol Spence is not running through Sean Poulter. If Errol Spence runs through Sean Poulter, like runs from, like I'm talking early knockout, then Errol Spence is even better than what I thought. I, I don't think he's going to run through him. I think Sean Poulter is going to put up a fantastic performance because the dog is back. I've seen it now. I've seen their little face-offs when they're doing interviews. That is the angry Sean Porter I need to see, right? That's the guy I need to see. I've seen the press conferences. That is the Sean Porter I need to see. I don't need to see nice and respectful Sean Porter. No. I need to see angry and dog Sean Porter. And I tell you now, we are going to have a fucking great fight. Don't get me wrong, Errol Spence is still a favourite, right? Um, but before I saw this version of Sean Poulter, it was like, I don't know, 85-15 Errol Spence. Now it's more like 65-35. So still, look, Errol Spence a big favourite. But um, don't sleep on this Sean Poulter. I mean, this guy, I don't know if you guys have been watching the behind-the-scenes clips of the way in which he's preparing for this fight. I mean, he is leaving no stone unturned, and I love that, right? Leave it all out there. Do your hardest and your best. He's doing that. I mean, he's doing this underwater thing to help with his breathing. I think he's picked the best sparring partners he can possibly pick. I mean, he's got David Benavidez there, who I think is the best 168-pounder, the biggest, the strongest 168-pounder to try and replicate that Errol Spence strength. I mean, Errol Spence ain't as big and strong as David Benavidez, put it that way. And according to Mike Coppinger, this has been real sparring, right? This isn't no tippy-tappy shit. They are fucking going at it in sparring. Can't beat that. And then, um, Kenny Porter mentioned this on a video I just watched. He starts sparring this week with uh, Demetrius Andrade. I mean, you can't pick a better southpaw to spar. Remember, Errol Spence is a southpaw. You're talking about, as an amateur, a world championship gold medalist, a 2 it world champion, very tricky, also very big. I mean, you, you can't beat those sparring partners. Again, it's very difficult to replicate someone, but I mean, you want to pick the best southpaw you can pick, Demetrius Andrade. You want to pick a very big, unbeaten, super middleweight, David Benavidez. I, I just like that. Tick the boxes you can tick. Sean Porter always steps up. Always steps up. I mean, even in his losses, majority decision against Kelbrook, that was the best Kelbrook, by the way. That wasn't Kelbrook coming off a loss. That wasn't Kelbrook coming off orbital bone surgery. That was the best Kelbrook, and it was a majority decision. We're talking around two rounds in it. Keith Furman. Again, we are talking about the best version of of Keith Furman. Not the Keith Furman that fought Manny Pacquiao. Not the Keith Furman coming off a long layoff. Not the Keith Furman coming off elbow surgery or the Keith Furman whose mind isn't on it. We're talking about the best version of Keith Furman. So these two losses have come against the best versions of those two people. Again, no one coming up in weight, no one coming down in weight, no one coming off a loss. He's fought the best two versions of those two people and lost razor-thin decisions. This guy is proven to step up 
when he fights the best. Fact, right? He's proven to step up. I'm going to give him excuses against Granados and Uga saying it's difficult to motivate yourselves for those fights. People talk about it. I, I don't necessarily believe it, but fighters say it, so it must be true, right? It's difficult to motivate yourself for a fight that kind of... It's not that it's meaningless because it takes you to the next stage, right? I mean, the win against Ugas got him this fight. But it's difficult to motivate yourself for those type of opponents. He's motivated now. And I can see it in his face when he speaks. He really thinks he can beat Errol Spence, right? A lot of Errol... Errol Spence is now kind of like a boogeyman. I feel like people go into the ring with Errol Spence now and it's almost like they've lost before they get in the ring. I don't think Sean Porter is believing that hype. I think he's going to go in there and put on a fantastic performance. Um, and I think, again, he's going to be dog Sean Porter. And dog Sean Porter is very difficult to deal with. Stylistically, it's very difficult to deal with. You can't find sparring for that because it's fucking awkward. I remember when I watched um, Sean Porter versus Kel Brook. Me and Ryan watched it together. I remember telling Ryan, this guy's a nightmare to box. Like, why would you want to box someone like that? This is a guy that swarms you. I mean, it's reckless that he uses his head. I mean, there's elbows. He uses his shoulder illegally. I mean, rabbit punches, uh, everything, right? It's a nightmare to box. And I just hope that we see that version. And I think we will see that version. And that's why I think it will be a fantastic fight. We've not really seen Errol Spence dig deep yet. A few rounds against Kell Brook, but I think this could be more than a few rounds. I, I really do. Um, again, if Errol Spence knocks out and stops um, Sean Porter, then that's a statement. I mean, that is a hell of a statement because um, no one else has been able to do it. I mean, Adrian Broner put him down, but the fight was over and Adrian Broner weight drained him. Um, that would be one hell of a statement. I just don't think it's happening. I think he causes Errol Spence a lot of problems. In the end, I think Errol Spence gets the job done. But please, like I said in the beginning, do not sleep. Do not sleep on Sean Porter. Peace.